what's up how is everybody doing welcome to milan news guys we have finally done it finally charles de cadler is a rosso nero ac milan player it's been uh three weeks four weeks of uh, grueling grueling news days after the other but finally we have landed the champion we have landed our champion antonio how you doing doing very well roy i'm Actually, like, this morning I woke up, and it was finally the day when I woke up and I saw the news, like, like the good news that we were waiting for all this time. Like, I never thought it would come. Actually, I was thinking, like, maybe next week, maybe the week after that, maybe the last day of the Mercado, but we finally closed it, and uh, this is our second signing uh, besides Origi, so finally. That's, that's all I'm thinking right now. I'm just exhausted with this. Yeah, 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 guys, uh, absolutely um, great. We finally got over the, the fish line. Now we can start to think about the next target. But in the meantime, let's also see what the details are, because there's there's a lot there. This was a, a crazy operation, one of the craziest operations I've seen Milan do in the market, by the way. But um, I want to say hi to chat first, guys. Everybody that is in chat, we have our friend, the Bayern Munich friend Hussein what's up congrats on CDK thank you Falcon Flynn thank you my man what's up Milan for life we got Saif Orlando did it come from Fabrizio I have a lot to say about Fabrizio but I'll, <laughs> I will reserve that for another live uh, yes it also did come from Fabrizio who needs Romano when you got Roy Laird and Antonio Jamal very true we got Carlo Moretti, what's up, Carlo Moretti, Christian, we got Anton, uh, Michael, Majidin, we got Nathan, shut up, Nathan, we love Nathan, look at Antonio smiling, Antonio, you look happy, huh, you're happy, right? See. Oh, that's nice, Romeo Buruchaga, yeah, from Louisville, that's it, we did it, we did it, hey guys, does anyone else feel like they gave birth getting this done, it kind of does feel like, Oops, sorry, wow, wow, you got it. That dog got pissed off right there. It does feel like uh, this operation felt like you give them birth. If uh, if uh, we can think that that's what it's like, it's probably like that. Guys, before we get started and look into the details of the Decatler uh, situation, if you have not, click that like button, smash that like button. Guys, you can also become members of the channel and you can uh, send super chats and stickers only if you can uh, to support the channel. But uh, what you can do for sure is smash that like button. Let's get to, let's try and get to 100 today for Charles de Cattler. That is, that is the goal. 100 likes for Charles de Cattler. Uh, Hans, Hans, who's been talking about Charles de Cattler for months, for months, even before anybody knew who this player was amongst the community, Charles has been talking about this player for months, thinking that he was he would have been a perfect target for AC Milan, and uh, Hans was right because Maldini and Masada were were on his same wavelength, and here it is finally, it is official. So Hans the scout, Hans the scout. All right, let's get into the re uh, into the details and what we know about this uh, situation. According to Calcio Mercato, Milan have had a 35 million offer, including bonuses, accepted. It is a fixed base of 32 million with an additional 3 million in bonuses that are rather easy to reach. Belgian journalist Sacha Tavolieri adds there is also a 15% resale clause. Hopefully we do not have to resell him. Hopefully that becomes the case. De Caller will most likely be in Milano tomorrow. Guys, that is going to be great. I can't wait for that. And he will sign a five-year deal worth $2.2 million per season, which we are going to talk about that. I'm talking in a second. A conclusion to the saga is thus on the cards, and the Milan fans can be very happy with the signing. Milan News, as well as several other credible sources, have now confirmed the news as well. Gianluca Di Marzio has added that the fee should be around $36 million, not $35 million, including the bonuses. So we're going to get to $36 million. Um... All right. So, what else uh, do we know regarding him? Like, he he sacrificed part, a chunk, a good chunk of his wages to make this happen, right? So, what do we know about that, Antonio? So, originally, uh, we had agreed to personal terms with uh, for about two point five million euros a season. Uh, I don't know exactly. I don't think it's been released how much he sort of sacrificed, but 
he did offer, and I think it was appreciated, that he offered to uh, slightly reduce this wage so that the deal could maybe be, go through. Uh, that means basically increasing the amount that we could actually pay like straight down for him, uh, like a fixed sum. And then also we included bonuses to get him. So I think that it helped close the, the final like gap because I did predict this at the start. I'm not, I'm not saying CDK was, I never said it was a done deal. I'm very cautious, but I did say that uh, Bruges, I think would accept 35 million for De Ketelaer. It looks like now it's about 35 to 36 million, including bonuses. So we did kind of hit around that range. And even though Leeds um, offered more than us, De Ketelaer was really pushing to come. So everything worked out. And honestly, I've, the, his behavior, even though, yes, he was a little bit disrespectful to Bruges, I think he was just, honestly, for his own career, he was trying to get out of that really weird situation of him try, you know, being stuck at a club that he clearly wants to leave for Milan. So it makes sense to me. And, and for Milan, I think you're getting a player who really, really wants to be there. Uh, he wants to perform in the CL in the UCL, and uh, you know, I think um, I think it'll go very well. So I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, very reminiscent of the Tonali situation, but Tonali really wanted to push uh, to play at Milan, and he sacrificed part of his wages in order to make this happen. Also, um, he he the Bruges owes him bonuses for. Um, you know, uh, I think goals and assists or whatever, some achievements, and he has refused those bonuses in order to make this happen. So, the calendar is 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 telling us, the fans, that he wants to come to this club and kick some serious ass. Like, he is really convinced about the project. Also, another thing that we know is that v uh, De Kattler, according to Vitiello, De Kattler and Pioli have been talking on the phone for quite a while, and Pioli has been telling him that De Kattler is going to be in the, um, in the heart of the project. So Pioli has a big part in, in convincing the player too, and that's, uh, that's very important. When you have the effect, the the, the confidence from the coach and when the coach is telling you that the, this project uh, you're going to be the heart of it you know that's a big part of it so guys hopefully he's not gonna flop hopefully he's not gonna flop i don't think he's gonna flop i think maldini masara and and pioli and this management has almost gotten everything right they've never messed up any of the deals they've gotten except for you know the manzukic um Pelle, uh, what was it pellegri yeah pellegri right that, that's his name right um, and yeah, just yeah. a few players. Uh, just a few players here and there, but really the bulk of the players that Maldini and Masada have gotten for Milan so far have been absolutely incredible and a super success. We are expecting this one to be the same. By the way, guys, in the poll we have a a, a vote, um, a poll. What do you think of this signing? I'm going to read it in a few minutes. So keep on clicking and let me know. Let me know. So what do you, does this kind of remind you of the Tonali situation a little bit, uh, Antonio? I think that yes, because uh, in both cases you're signing a pretty young prospect who's, I mean, I think the Kaitler is a little bit older than Tonali was, or maybe they're the same age, uh, like when we when we signed Tonali. But we were signing one of the most, you know, the hottest prospects on the market, I think, like especially in that position. Well, and also with him, it's he's very versatile. I think Tonali, though, I mean, in Italy, he was he's rated very highly. So it's a little bit different because you have that sort of domestic perspective. Also, he's a Milan fan from, you know, from since he was little. So that that was also nice. Uh, but yeah, in this case, uh, De Kettler wants to come to Milan. I think it's I don't think he's he was been a Milan fan all his life, but I think it's because you know he sees this as the next step in his career. Uh, but he, no matter what, he's willing to make sacrifices and come to us. So that's yeah, there are some parallels there. Um, and I think with the Kettler though, he's obviously not Italian, not in Italy, wasn't in the Italian new system, raised you know he's Belgian uh, from the Belgian system, and he is talked about throughout Europe, not just amongst, you know, the like Italian clubs. That's why he was I, like 35 million, uh, basically, because Bruges could, they had many suitors for him. Um, people who say that he's the, why, you know, why no super, super big club was after him yet. I think it's because not only is it that the biggest clubs in Europe don't necessarily need a player like that in their formations, uh, because once again, not many play a four-two-three-one, and not many, you know, rely on this sort of versatile forward, uh, false nine type player. Um, but also, I think he is right now, like 
he's maybe one season or half a season away from making a really, really big impact in the UCL. So he's kind of like still at that point that even though he's proved himself in Europe, I think he's uh, like, he's, he can blow up even more. So I think that we got him at a good time and hopefully he really makes that next step uh, this season. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think this is the perfect time to get him because you could have, if you waited a one year longer, his price, even though his contract uh, it was about to expire, but if he would have had another year, maybe some other team with much more capital could have could have got him the deal, offered him more, offered um, Bruges more. So we got him at the right time. And what you said about the tactical aspect of him is completely right. Based on how we play, which is this series of interchanges amongst the attacking midfielders and even the other players, De Keller is perfect for our system. So not only this is a great prospect for the future, but it's a functional target. It's a functional target. Maldini, Massara, Pioli, they don't go for the marquee signings, blah, 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 whatever. They go for the functional targets that are going to get them the results. And CDK seems to be that player. So um, it looks like a, a tremendous operation, 35 million. This is what I predict. This is what I'm predicting. The same way it happened with Kalulu, Tomori, Manyan. We paid these guys 28 million, 500K for Kalulu, uh, 15 million for Manyan. These players have tripled in value. I think the same thing is going to happen with CDK. We pay him 35 million in the next two or three years. His his value is going to go up to 70, 80 million. Who knows? That's what I think is going to happen. Knock on wood. Let's hope he doesn't become a flop because that would, that would really suck. Anyway, let's go to chat a little bit. And um, let's go also to the tap-in merchant, uh, Fabrizio Romano. Um, uh, so what does he say? What does he say? So there are, I also have other sources, but listen, we can talk about Fabrizio Romano. Uh, for me, uh, well, basically here, he just simply says that it's a done deal. And I think he also confirmed on another post or something on in Instagram that it is 32 million uh, plus three to four million in bonuses, something like that. Uh, so that's what we do know. With Fabrizio Romano, like, like you said, I don't rate him. I don't think he's talented or anything like that. I don't, like, I agree with you guys, like, well, he's well, not. We don't need to do. We don't need to go into a. Crazy yeah, no, I just want to say, but for him, all I'm saying is, when he posts something, then you know it, it is a f official. So, you can trust that this is a done deal now. That's so. There's no debate. It's a done deal. Okay, since we are on the subject, um, Di Marzio, when Di Marzio said that his mother, uh, Charles de Keller's mother, was at Milano looking for houses, a lot of people did not believe him. I believed him. Because it is strange that someone would just go on Twitter with all those followers and just say something like that. Um, so, you know, the Charles de Cattler operation just seemed like it was going to, you know, it was a bullseye operation. From the moment Maldini stepped on an airplane all the way to Belgium, at least to me, this felt like this was going to be, become a done deal. Uh, the, the efforts they were going through in order to get this player seemed, seemed very big. And for it not to happen would have been extremely embarrassing i think and also carlo monetti says here to be honest i find that a bit embarrassing maybe the fact that you know the player had to bring down his wages the player had to get in the middle of the situation um yeah i think it is a little bit embarrassing but who cares who cares we have the player now it's our turn to embarrass everybody else in the ucl as humbly as possible. Another little um, detail about this operation is CDK's um, agent, Antonio. Did you hear about this? So CDK's agent used to be a teammate of uh, Ibrahimovic. And okay. CDK's agent called Ibrahimovic and said, hey, you know, because all friendships, and he asked Ibrahimovic, you know, to take care of him, to get him to get him under his wing and to, you know, make sure that he's going to have a good transition and, and he's going to learn the Milan way. So very interesting uh, scenario there. Ibrahimovic also involved in this operation in some way or another. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I think Maldini probably spent his whole most budget here. Doubt there will be any more signings for Milan. Even we'll Dino see. speaking. Yeah, but we will see because at this point, Longo said we only have 50 million for this market. Uh, it kind of looks like it is true, but we'll see what happens. The market is still long. We do have some other players that were linked to Milan today we're going to talk about. All right, what else do we have from the Twitter sphere, Antonio? Well, I, you can just confirm this with... Uh... 
let me uh, change this actually, but we can confirm the the Catalan news with other sources that are more Milan based. So if we actually pull up other uh, famous journalists like Vitiello, Di Marzio, then you can also kind of see that everything is being confirmed. Usually what happens is a smaller journalist will like first post it. And I think, I don't know exactly who it was, but I did see that there was the first reports came from someone who I don't like some unnamed um, like source. And then after that, it slowly got confirmed by the smaller journalists and then Di Marzio and then Fabrizio Romano. So that's kind of how it exploded today. But yeah, this is a uh, Vitiello who's basically AC Milan, like, 100%, and he uh, here is also confirming that it's 32 million fixed plus, he says, three uh, for bonuses. So uh, it looks like around that, you know, 35 million price tag. And then also I can pull up Di Marzio because Di Marzio is also very reliable. Um, he basically says the same thing. And, yeah, I don't think there's any more debate. Uh, I think also, I guess the only thing that's kind of questionable here is when he's actually expected to come, like uh, in Milano, because some people are saying tomorrow, some people say Sunday, some people saying uh, Monday, maybe on Monday he'll sign uh, the contract officially. But yeah, it looks like oh, throughout the weekend uh, we're going to see some developments. So, Yes, yes. Um, uh, so according to what has been reported, maybe hopefully he comes in by tomorrow, does the medicals. I am assuming he won't be participating in the game on Sunday against Marseille. I think we're going to see some footage of him, you know, during the week into the next friendly, which will be against Vicenza on August 6th. So we're going to see a lot of him in the media, in the Milan, AC Milan social media. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of him there. We're going to see a, a footage in training, uh, him touching the ball with, with all the lads. So um, we're going to see a little bit of this. Hopefully we get to see him against Vicenza which is going to be very interesting. And I wonder what, how he's going to be received by the fans at the airport when he lands. Um, I wonder if it's going to be a big crowd. But yeah, we're expecting him to be at Milano tomorrow if everything is correct in the newspapers. Yeah, I think for 35 million euros, this is going to definitely excite a lot of the fans, the Curva Sud. This is like, I think, the biggest signing that Maldini has completed so this is like uh you know that's pretty special and i don't know he's gonna have a lot of expectations um he should because it's a, i mean this is taking up most of the budget i think is the we're not gonna send anyone anywhere near this price uh for the rest of the mercato unless something special happens but yeah i mean he's uh Tomo, you saw what tomori did for his price tomori had a chance to prove himself but this guy is coming in and I guess the management were really, really convinced. So it looks like hopefully he can live up to those expectations and beyond. I think his value is already going to increase just for the fact that he uh, came to Milan. And, you know, once he starts playing some games on the UCL, his price is just going to keep going up. So I think it's definitely a smart move. He has so much potential and he's young. So it's a good investment. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know what? After seeing how Ali hit, uh, hit the ground running that way, I wonder if CDK is going to be similar, um, you know, because Ali has also been a, a player that has completely impressed us in preseason, the player of the of the team so far in preseason. Three assists, one goal. Every game he plays, he looks good. He's, he's making things happen. He hit the ground running really good. Uh, hopefully CDK is the same. Hopefully um, he can integrate in the, in the system fast. Hopefully, you know, he can score goals right away. And the thing about Ali that you can see him. You can visually see what he can do, right? And let's hope that the same thing will happen with CDK. Of course, uh, we still need, a lot of us, including me, still need to discover this player. But uh, we do have uh, people that already were familiar with the player and that are saying really good things. Okay, let's get to chat. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of messages coming through, so I have to you know, try to get through them. I think, personally, 35 million is fair enough for a very talented young prospect who can play multiple positions in attack. Also, don't forget, he looks way better than Diaz in passing and finishing. I'll take your word for it. I mean, the statistics say so. In Bruges, he had 14 goals and 9 assists, which is really good numbers, um, really good numbers. Uh, that's in the, in the league. And he had one assist in the Champions League, but he did play 
already more than six, seven, eight games or, or even more in the Champions League so far. So he does have decent experience in the Champions League. Uh, thank you, Donald. Really appreciate it, guys. Hey, if you have not, guys, smash that like button. Do it for CDK. Today's goal is 100. And click and vote, vote, vote. And, guys, if you're out there, guys, show me some CDK emojis. If you're a member, show me some CDK emojis. It is the CDK day. Today is Ali's birthday. Look at that. Yep. Look at that. Hey, Roy, also, uh, I think Sala Makers will play an important role in, like, you know, getting him acclimated to the team because uh, also Origi. So we have two other Belgians in the squad. Um, so makers is younger too. And I think they probably have both played the, uh, in the Belgian with the Belgian national team at times together, or maybe they've trained together. So hopefully um, there, he, yeah, I think he's going to have enough support, you know, and he'll be comfortable. He also spoke with Pioli. So Pioli definitely is waiting for him as well. Like I think this is kind of like a relationship that, will work well it looks like he also really approves of this um and we have other french speakers because in belgium i think france is the most spoken language so right, well, it depends right. on part of belgium yeah, yeah 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 uh salamakers and origi and um yeah the french players and and ibra 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 is going to play a big part in yeah. his development so i think he's going to be um protected very nicely and he's going to be welcomed uh, you know in a very special way okay let's go to a few chats and then guys um uh, let's move on to some other links that have been um, you know we've been talking about have been so uh, unless there's other stuff you want to oh uh, one more thing i actually just, just quick research the Ketteler was actually born in bruges uh so i'm guessing and just because i know belgium is pretty is really unique uh you know cultural place because of its we actually learned about it this year but uh specifically but um in bruges which is also the you know the club he plays for is bruges so he's kind of a homegrown player for bruges so it's interesting that he really was motivated to want to leave for his career so i actually respect that a lot um but for bruges uh, apparently in bruges they speak flemish which is the most common language so it's not necessarily french but he probably may also know how to speak french as well so yeah, I remember reading something about him and what he fought in the past. Basically, I think it was last year that he was saying he never really thought about leaving Bruges. Like, the idea of leaving Club Bruges scared him. But uh, he said that now he feels ready. He feels ready to make the move. Obviously, the family is behind him, for sure. Um, uh, you know, his agents. And he's ready to make that step. And uh, he's ready to make that step in, in, in his career. Hopefully, he can be a great success in Milan and stay as long as possible with Milan, you know, stay as long as possible. Um, Paul says, I'm happy that we eventually sign him. We still need, we still need a Kessie replacement, backup center back, right wing if Messias or Salad is sold. Um, we're going to talk about that. There was someone else here who also asked, what are the percentages of, um, of Ziyech joining the team? Okay, so if, like, Three days ago, for, for, for two days, the news was very positive on Ziyech. Very positive on Ziyech. Ziyech is willing to put down his wages. Ziyech wants to join Milan. Milan going in for, for Ziyech. Tuchel wants to get rid of the excess amount of players that don't want to be at Chelsea. So Ziyech was looking very good, looking like a possibility. But today and yesterday, it has slowed down. The reports on ZH have slowed down, and rather we're seeing people saying it's going to be either CDK or ZH. So let's see where this saga ends. Today there's not much about ZH. I haven't seen much, aside from aside from the reports that are saying it's one or, or the other. But today the ZH reports have slowed down. If you ask my opinion, I think ZH is still very, very, a very... Is, is there. It's a good option for AC Milan. It can happen. I think there is a connection between the player and, and the team. Um, Ziyech wants to leave Chelsea. If he is willing to bring down his wages, then it's going to be a done deal. But if Ziyech can find another team that is going to give the wages that he wants, then he's not joining AC Milan. That's that's what I think. I don't think he is attached to, to the project, the AC Milan project. I think he just wants to continue to get his wages and play high-level football wherever it is. So, different situation. That is just my feeling about Ziyech. I think it's still open. I think it's definitely still open, though. We'll see what happens with Ziyech. Have you seen any uh, anything on Ziyech? I don't think anything has come out regarding Ziyech, right? The past, like, two days, not really. 
I think I saw some journalists that were saying um, that Ziyech, like, is, is, you know, very, very interested and Chelsea are looking to offload him. So the it's a very good opportunity. Um, my only concern and the reason why I'm more inclined to sort of believe the reports that say that it's unlikely we get him and Ticket to there are that, um, is, you know, I'm, the reason why I don't believe that is, or I'm, I'm more in, inclined to believe those is that we already have two right wingers uh, and right midfielders in our position. We have Adli, who looks like he wants to play Cam. We bring in CDK, who looks like he's most... I mean, people say center forward. I think I don't think Pioli is going to play him at the center forward very, very often. I think he's more of a like trequartista or the, maybe even the right midfielder position. So we have those positions pretty much covered. And Diaz also in the Cam. So... It's I don't know if we bring in Ziyech, I think we we have to sell one of those players or at least get rid of them. Um, and I don't know if that's really realistically going to happen. I would love us uh, to get Ziyech because if we got um, Ziyech and De Ketler in this backup, I mean we'd be addressing the two biggest concerning positions for us in that Trequarti area. So that is like that would be a dream mercato. I think if we get Ziyech and De Ketler, uh Personally, I think we're playing a lot of games. I would love to see the competition, and I want us, you know, in the squad. And I think it, it's healthy, so I would want us to get to bring him in. But I don't know if our club is going to prioritize that. So I think that center back, center midfielder are more important on the list. But um, hopefully, we can actually go for CH as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before we move on, guys, super sticker from Raul. Really appreciate you, Raul. Thank you very much for the stu- super sticker. Thank you for um, supporting the channel that way. Guys, thank you very much. And another question here that I saw was uh, from Will Ghibli. He says, we need that skillful defender from Germany. Obviously, he's talking about Indica. For me, Indica, guys, I'm going to say this, and I have no problem saying this with what a million percent confidence indica is one of the greatest prospect talents on the planet right now so if we can land this player just land an indica for me that makes it a 10 out of 10 mercato hopefully this can happen this player very skillful he's got the physique the identity kit that milan was after you know when they were after botman big tall strong um, but this guy can play football really well. Great technique for a center back. He can also play as, as a left back. He can play as a wing back. Um, this guy is a perfect identikit uh, for AC Milan. I really hope we're going to go in for him. So we, we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, unfortunately, there are some li- more links with Tanganga today over in Dika. And this is kind of, you know, uh, I kind of predicted this, I think, because we saw that if we bring in CDK, it's a big chunk of the budget. So it's unlikely that we can close Indica. I think Indica is like 20 million to 25, but if we make an offer of 15 to 18, that may be enough to persuade them. So it's kind of, you know, it's very interesting. I really wish we could go for him, but I don't know. Yeah. And the other thing about Indica that why I, I do feel positive about the Indica situation. Actually, I want to bring up is hardware because as far as I know, Frankfurt have not, splashed the cash for Hague yet. As far as I know, as far as the reports that I've been reading, as far as what I've been following. So there is an opening right there for Milan to say, okay, you don't need to splash me that 12 million. Keep the 12 million. Let me give you eight more million and give us Indica. You know? So that can happen. That can happen. We just need to confirm whether or not Frankfurt has already paid AC Milan. As far as the reports that I've been reading and the journalists that have been talking about it frankfurt has not yet paid ac milan the money for hardware so let's see what happens there today no reports on anything this is just us speculating but um yeah tanganga is the player that has been linked with milan today was being linked with milan today okay yeah. also eric Bailly as well as another name that has been is being brought up from manchester united did Eric Bailey just release a tweet where he was uh, trolling Ibrahimovic and Lukaku? Was that Maybe. Uh, I, I think it is. He is friends with Ibrahimovic. So well, he was, he, was, he was on Lukaku's side, though. I don't know if I would say him. I, I could have uh, the wrong names. Uh, my bad. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to um, some other news, guys. Uh, let's move on to some other news. I don't think it's him, actually. I don't see it. Wait, how recent would it be? I think it was a few days ago. I think it was a few days ago. Uh, but anyway, that is not important. It's fine. 
Hey, Roy, also, hey, guys, uh, really appreciate all the viewers. It looks like we have really good viewership on this stream. And uh, thank you guys all. Like, If you guys are new, uh, thank you for sticking with us, and hopefully you can stay with us for a very long time because we really appreciate all the fans, all the diehard Milanese here. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Eric Bailey is garbage, so we have some people here that are not very happy <laughs> with the name Bailey. All right, guys. Um, uh, let's uh, let's go to the next operation. Of course, we will be talking about De Keller on and on. Um, yes, no. Uh, there was someone asked, do you think De Keller is going to be in the game on Sunday? My guess is no, but I think we're going to see him against Vicenza. Um, here we go. Hans Di Marzio says, The player's agent Tom de Moule took the role of the mediator in a very tough negotiation with Bruges, holding out for as long as possible in their 35 million demands. Well, great job to everybody that made this happen. Great job. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, uh, we will be talking about CDK in the next upcoming days. It is official. Daniel Maldini has uh, signed um, for Spezia a dry loan. Uh, one season long loan. So Daniel Maldini has made space for CDK essentially. And um, and this should be good good experience for Maldini because I think Maldini can play a very important role in Milan's future, especially if Diaz does not work out. If Diaz does not work out, we're not going to buy Diaz by the end of his loan. Then Maldini, hopefully he will have gained the experience that he needs to play at higher levels. He can come back in and he can be CDK's number two or Ali's number two. Or even more, who knows. So anyway, I'm happy for Daniel Maldini. I think this is going to be a great experience for him. He's going off to college to learn how to play with the big boys and then hopefully he can come back. Um, yeah. Hey, Roy, what are you, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say, did you see the uh, video that in like Spezia released that sort of introduced him. Like it's like a, it's a really, it's a funny video. Uh, and it's like super intense and stuff, but actually I was informed by someone that, um, <laughs> that the video that they filmed for Daniel Maldini is literally like a copy off of like a, a retro Nike, uh, commercial with Paolo Maldini. Like, and it, it's basically like, it, like, it's like they use the same lines. It's like a parallel between the two. And uh, I, if I could find both videos, I will. I'll, I'll try to look for them right now on Twitter. I don't know if we get copyrighted at all, but um, I kind of want to pull them up, but just to show you, it's really funny. Yeah, yeah. Find them on Twitter. Uh, let's let's uh, show them. I found one of them. Okay. Um, uh, three three minutes. Recommend that you take the boy under his protection. Yeah, yeah. I I, I said this, Hans. Um, I was aware of that. Uh, Carlo Moretti says Iber will welcome CDK with open arms. Yeah, yeah. So we'll check out this video on Daniel Maldini. Guys, if you have not yet, guys, today is the CDK day. Click smash that like button. Today's goal is 100. 100 likes for today's goal. So smash the like button, guys. And subscribe if you're new. Um, what do you guys think about Daniel Maldini? Let's see. In the comments, you will find Paolo video. Okay. Why can't... Uh, Maldini not play double pivot. He should have been at least a defensive midfielder, if not a defender. To be honest with you, Prometheus, he looks like he does have those characteristics, because I remember him winning the ball in that middle many times when I saw him play. My issue with Daniel Maldini is that when I see him play, he does not have intensity. He does not look like a warrior. The kid needs to become a warrior. He needs to be a hard-working warrior that, you know, gives his soul to to the team his blood his sweat um at spezia he can learn that at spezia he can learn that put him in the lion's den let him fight against the lions let him be the underdog let him be the underdog and let him fight okay you well, got it so i found the i found both videos but the problem is with even if it's on twitter what the maldini the paolo maldini video is a youtube link so we risk getting copyrighted i think if we did that so I think the Twitter one is oh, safe. That's fine. But... Yeah, just go, just do the Twitter one. That's fine. All right. Well, this is uh, Daniel Maldini. Let me share. Real quick. Uh, you can see this, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's check out this video. Go for it. Solo perché mi chiamo Maldini. Non vuol dire che io sia nato calciatore. 
Anch'io devo correre e allenarmi. Lavorare con impegno tutti i giorni. Quando scatto in aria a palapiede, seguo il mio destino. Io sono Daniel, io sono Maldini. All right. So, for anybody that is not uh, an Italian speaker or was not, a, did they, I don't know if they had uh, subtitles there, but he basically said, just because my name is Maldini doesn't mean I was uh, born a soccer player. Like everybody else, I have to run, I have to work hard, and, um, and that was pretty much the gist of it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, nice, nice, good. Good, man. That's what he said. He has to be humble. You know, he was babied uh, at Milan. He is the Maldini, obviously son of the, of the, of the boss. Um, he, needs to, he needs to go and become a man. So I'm happy for him. I'm very happy. Him. So uh, I see some people in the chat are saying that it's the video of Pablo's in the comments. I did find it, but the problem is... Uh, oh, wait, actually, I think I did find the Twitter one, actually. Hold on. Yeah, this is... A, okay, this is better. I found the Pablo Maldini one. All right, go for it. This is literally, this is a Nike ad. Uh, okay, then this one should just be on Twitter. So you can see this, right? All right, we're good, Roy. All right, let's play this. Just because my last name is Maldini doesn't mean I was born to play football. I still have to run and practice and work out every day. When some guy comes charging into the box with the ball, who's going to stop him? My dad? All right, I see. Okay, okay, okay. That's clever. Nice, nice, nice. Wow. Maldini yeah. speaks good English, huh? Even back then, when he was young, he, he already knew how to speak English very well. Cultured, cultured man. Very good, very good. Um, yes, guys, 80 pe 92 people watching, guys. Click that like button, guys. Do it for CDK. Do it for AC Milan. Do it for the growth of the AC Milan community around the world online. Um, let's get to 100 today. Let, let's get to 100 today. But yes, uh, Carlo Monetti says... Um, hope it works out for him. Spets is a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Um, the one last thing about uh, Maldini. Who is the coach? Is Tiago Silva still the coach? Not Tiago Silva. Tiago Motta. No, no, no. Uh, I think it's Luca Gotti from uh, who was the Udinese coach, like a few like last season um, before Udinese replaced him. But basically, uh, Tiago Motta I think left, and I think he's looking for another club. Well, let me check to see if he's actually found another club, but I know for a fact he left as coach, even though he did a decent job with them. Got you. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So there you go. So, so far today, uh, we have two official news so far. CDK, uh, Jordan AC Milan, and uh, Daniel Maldini making space for CDK, going to Spezia. Hopefully, we wish him the best of luck. Legendary name. 70 years uh, ace in the AC Milan uh, family, the Maldini name. So um, good luck to him. And hopefully, we see him in an AC Milan shirt one season from now. One season from now. All right, let's move on. Tanganga, Milan to resume talks over defender as Tottenham will favor permanent move. So it looks like Tottenham wants the player to join AC Milan. Um, Milan is looking more to get a deal similar to Tomori, a loan with option or maybe obligation, but I think they're looking for option as far as I'm concerned. To be honest with you, this is just my opinion, guys, on this operation. I have red flags uh, all over the, the place, especially because this player, you know, has not really impressed Conte. Conte is a player, that is a coach that loves his defense defenders. So that is already a red flag for me. Other red flag, been injured a lot of the season. And finally, the other red flag is Paratici. We have never had any good deals with Paratici, ever. <laughs> Every time it's been a scam with Paratici. But uh, maybe Tanganga will work out. Who knows? My preferred uh, uh, player in the defense is Indica. I think, as I said, Indica to me is one of the best players in the world, upcoming best players in the world. So if we get Indica, it's a 10 out of 10. If we get in Tanganga, we'll find out. Maybe he can become a, a great player. Um, we'll see. 
but um, but it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. What do you think of Tanganga Antonio? And guys, let me know what you guys think about uh, Tanganga and Dika, and also Gabbia. What is going to happen with Gabbia? I am a fan of Gabbia. I like Gabbia. Um, I want him to either go on loan so he can play like Maldini, or he can take uh, Romagnoli's spot if we can't land uh, Tanganga. So what is your opinion on Tanganga? And guys, let me know what you guys in chat think about him. So uh, based on what you said about Conte, so first of all, I want to make it clear, Indica is my favorite uh, option for the center back. I think it's clear uh, he's just the better player uh, for many, many reasons, but we don't have to talk about Indica, but back to Tanganga. I did say this on another stream. Tanganga, to me, it makes sense why we like him. So when I see this guy play, uh, when I've seen him, like when he's healthy, he's very aggressive. Uh, yes, you can say he's sometimes a bit rash and not as composed as Tomori when he makes those tackles, but he's a very good one-on-one -on -one defender. He's very fast. Um, he's a little bit, he's not that tall, uh, but you know, he's more of like a modern center back that can also play as like a fullback. I think he can play right back if we need him to. Um, so to me, it's very similar. Like it makes sense. There are parallels with Tomori because once again, we got this player, he's English. We're getting him from England. If you get him and he does decently well, you can actually resell him for very high value. Uh, and he gets, you know, uh, he's coming from a league that's very, like, fast pace. And so I think that he'll do well against quick strikers in Italy. Uh, so to me, it makes, like, good sense. The only thing is with him is that he just is re he's coming back from a pretty serious knee injury uh, that I think sidelined him for the remainder of the season for, like, a whole half of a season. Uh, so that is concerning. And he also, like you said, with Conte, uh, I think with Conte, although he did, um, you know, he doesn't really rate him as highly, that is a good point, and we should, like, you know, think about that as we look at this player. Uh, I will say, though, with Conte, whenever I see his teams, he definitely tends to prefer, like, very tall center backs. Like, and, yeah, I think he prioritizes strength and uh, physical stature uh, a lot in his center backs in his back three. Because if you look at Inter and you look at uh, even Spurs right now with uh, Romero, uh, D Dyer, and whoever else they, they're playing at center back, you see like that it doesn't really have these sort of shorter, modern, like very pacey center backs that I think do well in Europe. Um, and I think with Tanganga, you can get that. And in the, the way we play, I think another player like that would be very good. So whatever center back we bring in, I want him to be sort of modernized, meaning that he's fast and he's good in the one-on-one. -on -one. The thing about Indica, before I finish, is that he's fast, good in the one-on-one, -on -one, and he's six foot four. So that's there's and he's left footed. So it's just it's only like everything that uh, Tanganga can do. I think Indica is just the better player. So that's yeah. my perspective. Yeah, Indica. Uh... I think he scored four goals and four assists. Indica is a guy that is going to get you assists. He's going to get you goals. Uh, no disrespect to Tanganga. No disrespect to him at all. You know, uh, I just like Indica is such a great, would be such a great operation. But, um, yeah, and I think Tanganga and Indica would also, because of the characteristics that you, that you described and because of what we know that Milan is looking for, these are probably players that, are good at playing a high line since we are going to be playing a high line we're not a team that parks a bus unless we are forced to park the bus but this is not a team that plays to park the bus so we need defenders that are capable of playing a high line that have that pace to to um to follow back and to cover a lot of space so um yeah it is what it is um let's go to chat i think if indeed and Ziyech arrives and we are left with no money we can bank on bakayoko for kisi role as he mostly as mostly unused last year, but was a star in Gattuso's helm. So far, Bakayoko is looking decent. You know, it looks like he's happy. Bakayoko, I like Bakayoko. I like Bakayoko. I, I wish that he would um, turn back, uh, return to his form. Uh, he's, he's great. Okay, um, let's keep on going. Tanganga is very rash, and as far as I'm concerned, it's not an amazing move. I watched Spurs, Tanganga is terrible, and only played one good game for City. We still need to bolster the defense unit. Hans, I love the logic, sell by the shoot and stock the market. Yeah, guys, so let me know what you guys think about Tanganga. Um, I'm very, I'm, 
I'm not too sold on this operation just yet, but let's see, let's see. I'm not going to make up my mind. Uh, okay, let's go to one more chat here, and then let's move on. Guys, can anyone exactly tell what our transfer budget is, including sales of now? So what we know for sure, the number that we know for sure is that with all the amortizations of the players that have left, meaning the wages that today we are not spending anymore, we're up to close to 50 million. 55 million, that is what was calculated. So... Um, we have that 50 million that is probably going to be going to towards uh, wages, and maybe we can use that also to buy players. Plus, if Longo is right, we have another 50 million, so we should have close to 100 million in theory. But that does not mean 100 million for transfers. That means 100 million for transfers and wages. So it's both. Okay, one more. Milan should look at to recruit more Italian players or improve their academy. Only Tonali is a good Italian in Milan right now. Yes, they definitely should go for more Italian players, uh, for sure. All right, uh, Antonio, um, what else do we know? What else do we have here about... I guess we can go to the uh, to the Chukwameka um, um, uh, link that we have. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we're just following the positions, basically, that we're trying to fill up in the squad right now for depth purposes. Yes, uh, so this is another player, a very interesting player, young player, very young player, nine, I think he's 19, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, correct? yeah, he's 19? Yep, yep, uh, he is, and he is basically, in my opinion, I totally understand why we're going after him, and he looks to be someone that we can bring in that can go right into the pivot, and he has youth, and he has also a lot of physicality, but also he has that potential to grow even more, become more creative. So I really like this player. Um, looks like Sanchez was the one for a while, but because of whatever happened with him and PSG, uh, there are some issues. And now we're looking at other targets. And this guy, uh, I do I do rate him. Um, I haven't seen much of Aston Villa, I'm going to be honest. Like I don't watch many of their games. And when I do, he doesn't really often play all the time because he's sort of still up and coming. But, I mean... I trust our scouting department. So if we see, if we scout this guy and we believe that he can come in and be a real good rotation player, uh, then it makes a lot of sense. I think Aston Villa fans, they are kind of speaking poorly about him just because they're a little bit upset that he's looking to leave because he doesn't want to renew. I think his wages are like, he wants higher wages at a young age. Uh, so there, there's a little bit of uh, disagreements about that. But overall, I think um, as a player, I really, I, I think I rate him, and I think he can grow a lot. Yeah, I, I checked out his highlights. A lot of his highlights are with is in academy football, though. But he definitely looks to be a player that um, you know is is um, miles ahead of any of the academy players he's playing against. Uh, he also has that EPL experience. I think he also had a very good. Didn't he win a tournament with uh, with the U19 English team? I think they won, I'm not sure. And he was uh, considered either the best player of the tournament or one of the best players in England or the best player in England. But I liked what I saw. I'll be honest with you. I liked what I saw. And um, Roy, yeah, go ahead. also just to, like uh, two main things. He's actually 18 years old, but he's turning 19 in October. Uh, so he's actually younger than me. <laughs> Uh, and um, he's born in Austria, so even though, but he represents Italy, and his parents are Nigerian, so he has like kind of like Tomori, a lot of different uh, nationalities that you can. Well, represent. he represents Italy. Oh, sorry, sorry, England. I meant, did I say Italy? Oh, I mean yeah. England. He represents England, uh, but he is um, born in Austria, and his parents are Nigerian, so he has that like multiple nationality. Yeah, I think this would be a great operation, to be honest with you. Based on what I saw in his highlights, obviously highlights don't tell you the full story, but they do give you a glimpse of what a player can do. And I think uh, for the price uh, and for the potential, you know, can be a good operation. And yeah, if these players, especially the English players, if you get them young and you develop them while, you're, while they're young, you could, and let's say they want to go back to England, um, you can sell these players for a huge profit because the English teams will pay infinite amount of cash for 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 players. So it'd be a good it'd be a good operation. I think this could be a very interesting operation. Yo, Roy, look at Kangoo in the chat. There's no way he's being serious. I mean, I guess he yeah, could he, be, but 
Kangu is uh, is trolling probably. But hey, if you know him, tell him that uh, we at AC Milan uh, welcome welcome him in open arms. Yeah, so Chakwa Manka is just 18 years old. He's been playing for Aston Villa since he was 12. So, yeah, especially after he helped England win the U19 European Championship. Exactly. So, he already has that winning gene inside of them, right? Because uh, he has already won with the national team. Those are big trophies. Uh, Villa are asking around 20 million to sell despite it being within a year of expiry of his contract because the English U19 is part of a three-way battle involved in Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain. So, um, yeah, it's going to be tough uh, outbidding those two teams, but uh, those two teams might be going for different targets, players that are more ready. Uh, while we are a team that likes to go for these potential uh, champions and develop them into, into superstars. So maybe we can win this one, maybe. But we'll see how this one develops. We'll see how this one develops. Um, Wrapped with these guys on way home from work, seen the news, heard it first from Roy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, we need to strengthen our squad for the season, not 20 million on a prospect. So there's that opinion too, you know. There's that opinion as well that uh, we, we don't want prospects. We, we need players that are ready for the Champions League. Unfortunately, Sanchez was going to be that player. But that's just not, I don't think that's going to happen at this point. Actually, reports today were suggesting that Sanchez, at this point, Lille have accepted the PSG's offer. So at this point, Sanchez is gone, and he is going to be playing for for a, for PSG, unless something crazy happens and he ends up playing for us. Um, do you know anything about Sanchez? Have you seen anything about Sanchez? That's the last I've read, but I think that's where we're at with Sanchez. Yeah, I think with Sanchez, our interest is a little bit like, has just declined and even though we have an agreement with Lil, I don't know if Sanchez is just still waiting for PSG. Uh it's either that or Milan has basically told them that, you know, they're reflecting on the situation and I think he really wants to go to PSG. Uh so I don't think we're looking at him, you know, concretely anymore, which is very unfortunate. Um but yeah. yeah. Also I do want to say this. Uh Kangu, if he if you're being serious, tell him uh ask him if for like ten minutes, you can get Shuko Menka to come on the stream, is that that would be pretty? That'd be pretty fun. There you go. There you go, guys. Um, hey guys, this is the only uh, Milan channel where we have uh, connections across the world, English-speaking Milan channel, that we can get you uh, exclusive access to some of our top uh, prospects and uh, <laughs> players that we're looking at. So Let's stay see. tuned. Stay tuned. Let's Kangu, you have something to prove now. You have to. You have something to prove. Um, uh, we need to strengthen our squad. Yeah, red vet. Okay, so this one in Italian here says Ziyech non è stato chiamato per la partita contro l'Udinese, quindi vuol dire che dovrebbe venire al Milan ormai fuori dal progetto. Very interesting. Basically, what what our friend M H M is saying that Ziyech was not called up for the friendly against Udinese. I think they're playing right now, actually, and uh, it could. It could mean what he is saying here. This might mean that he is coming to Milan. He's out of the project, and maybe, maybe that is an indication. That is might be an indication there. Thank you for the tip, M H M. Appreciate that. Um, so it's actually the score is two one Chelsea, and uh, Conte and Raheem Sterling scored, but Delufeo scored for Udinese. Hey guys, we're playing Udinese as our first Serie A game. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so there you go, there you go. Very interesting. Thank you for that tip. Um, if we don't strengthen the current squad, we're going to F around and end up outside the top four. Honestly, I don't believe that. I think we're very strong. I honestly think we're very strong. Um, um, but we are going to strengthen the squad. We are definitely going to strengthen the squad. Unfortunately, unlike the other teams, our operations always take time. Uh, they're not going to be as smooth as the other teams, and that's because of the relationship between the negotiators, Maldini, Massara, and the management, where everything still needs to go through layers of bureaucracy. It has to go. It still needs to go through Gazidis. Gazidis still needs to go to Elliot. This was reported by Vitello, uh, and this is why things just take longer. And also, capital, capital. 
Elliot is not necessarily crazy on spending too much uh, capital. It is what it is, but I do believe we are going to get stronger, and I do believe that today, the way the team is today, we are still strong enough to win the Scudetto. I'm not saying we are the favorites. I'm just saying we're strong enough, but we will get stronger. Hey, Roy. Yeah. It's only the uh, – it is the 87th minute. I'm actually – I turned on the game right now. I'm watching it. Uh, Udinese at Chelsea. They're playing in um, Udine. And I just want to say, Udinese look pretty impressive. Like, even though they're losing – and uh, actually, you know, Chelsea are countering right now. But on the ball, they look they look to be a good side. So, I think it's going to be difficult. We better be in shape when we play them. They always give us a lot of trouble. But uh, hopefully, we will be in top shape and very, you know, with intensity. Yeah, like yeah, and I'm seeing some people here talking in the chat about um, about Pobega. I trust that Pobega is going to be very important for the team, even though maybe in these preseason friendlies he hasn't shown it. But why I say that, and I've repeated this before, is that Pioli in his uh, in his press conference in the beginning of the training sessions, he said he noticed that Pobega has really developed physically and he's added muscle bulk to his frame. And he was very impressed. And also, guys, this is a big signal. Pobega has been renewed. They have given. They have. They have. Um, they have retouched his contract from 300k to 1 million. Okay, that's a that's a big that's a good contract for the player. That means that they believe in this player. So I think that Pobega will have his say in the team, and he will be very useful. I would not count out Pobega right now. I definitely would not. Um, I don't know if this is true. Majidin says leads are in for Ziyech as well. Um, I don't know if that is true, but it could be true. That'd be funny, man. That'd be really funny. Leads and uh, these the Premier League mid table, man. They're trying to keep, now they can compete financially with us. Like, a, like you know, they can basically come in and offer more than what we can offer on pretty much any player. So that would be uh, disappointing. But we have to see if we can actually get Ziyech as well. And also, I think we offer Champions League football, and just the, uh, as you know, as large as our club is, we can pretty much lure any player, uh, you know, from most uh, away from most Premier League teams. Uh, so yeah, I think I mean, if we want Ziyech, we can get him. Don't worry. Yeah, Conrad says we need that experience in our midfield, just like the defense and the attack. Chelsea um, scored three one to Chelsea. There you go. Hans says, Pobega is going to fight hard for us. That is for sure. Guys, if you have not already, click that like button. Click that like button. Smash that like button. We need to get to 100. At least, let's see if we can get to close to 100. We are at 72. 28 more likes to go. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Let's do this. And you, Man, I just saw ch the goal that Chelsea just scored was a tap-in with no – like the defending was so poor – I can't believe Udinese just let them score like that because when we play them, it's like always, it's a it's always a fight to get those goals. You know, like they always have to they, they defend with two lines of four, it's a mess. But they literally just squared the ball back and that was a tap in for Chelsea, so super easy. Udinese, Udinese, Udinese. Um, this is interesting here. Before we get into the next uh, report, uh, did you hear Inter shirt shirt? sponsors cut them on payments yes guys so basically inter has a new sponsorship and these guys are not paying the bills so now inter is in a weird situation financially inter is a mess you know they're doing a decent market they weren't able to get bremer and dibala like they wanted but uh, that team is a financial mess thank god we are not in that situation thank god we're not in that situation i do not envy inter's situation uh one bit whatsoever. Um, Bianco Neri says, EPL fanboys are probably shaking in their boots when they can't beat a relegation farmers team. <laughs> uh, I wish Reber would buy Juve slow down their spending. <laughs> They're going for Premier <laughs> Come on, it's not Red Bull. That is funny. Davide Romano, Signor Davide Romano, come stiamo, ragazzi? Forza Milan, Forza Milan. Um, ok, here another, another um, piece of news. Di quello che ho capito, visto che Tuchel non lo considera più, Ziyech ha deciso di non mettersi più a disposizione come riserva, secondo me solo Milan o Manchester United possono comprarlo. So yeah, like we said before, Tuchel just does not want this player there anymore. He doesn't consider him. Ziyech has decided to, to um, put himself out, out of the squad 
and uh, it's either Milan or Manchester United, according to M A M H M. Thank you for that. Really, Man United, coached by yeah. Thank you for the Italian. Uh, also, like you know, because you're also highlighting that we can we we're bilingual here and we represent all different ty- uh, Milan fans from all over the world. But uh, Ziyech with Man United, Eric Ten Hag is actually you know uh, you know he's the coach and he was the R- uh, IX coach. Uh, for many years with Ziyech uh, in his prime with Ajax. So it looks like uh, that could be realistic, even though they already have Sancho and a lot of other players. Um, so maybe maybe they can get, uh, you know, uh, Ziyech as well. But I don't know if that's very concrete yet uh, from what I've been reading. Yeah, that's a good point. The Ten Hag is a very good point, And I guess that makes sense when our friend M- MHM... Uh, you know, says Manchester United. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, Hans says, I like this team. A lot of players aren't guaranteed a starting role, and we have a lot of talent on low wages that are hungry to win with just a few experienced guys on fairly big contracts. I agree with you, Hans. I think it's a perfect chemical, um, it's a perfect perfect formula for, for the players to be hungry and want better and fight for better contracts and fight for their position. I think it's, it's a beautiful project. We're doing a great job. Um... Where are we streaming from? Uh, well, we are streaming from America, but we have people from all over the world that joins us here. Okay, let's go to the next article, which uh, is the last one that we're going to be covering, which is the uh, renewal situation of Benasser and um, and possibly Leal. So let's look at that. Uh, this is very interesting, and I have my thoughts, my speculations about it. Benasser puts renewal talks with Milan on standby. The reason? Um, the situation regarding the renewals of key players remain, remain set aside for the time being. In addition, a layout situation that would be dealt with in time, La Gazzetta dello Sport says, Ficayo Tomori about to extend his contract. Ficayo Tomori has married the Milan project. He wants to stay here for a long time. Um, he has absolutely no intention of going anywhere, according to what is being said. And also Pierre Kalulu, they're going to be um, touching up his contract. And also Tonali, by the way. But here, let's go into Benasser. Benasser is also a player that Milan wish to extend, but according to what filters from sources close to the situation, he, ask, he is asking more than the 3.2 million that Milan put on the plate. So the Algerian, as well as the others, believe they might be able to earn more with Redbird. So they're waiting for uh, the changeover to take place. A few days ago, there was reports that the changeover is going smoothly, that uh, Jerry Cardinale is getting the funds, is fundraising, and he's, he's almost there. So the changeover should be happening in September. And it looks like these players are going to wait for Jerry to sign those contracts. They want to see what the financial situation is with Jerry. This is something that I suspected um, from from some time now. I don't know what this means. It's a, it's a risky game because we're going into January or, or basically, I mean, I guess we could do it in September, but we can't sell these players up until the next transfer market. And the more time we wait, if these guys don't want to sign, the less we can make out of them if we decide to sell them. So we're playing with fire right now. You know, it is what it is. I really hope that um, we, we, we get this done and we, um, we can re- renew Benacer, renew Leal, and, and show the world that AC Milan is fully back. Uh, what are your opinions on this, Antonio? What do you think? Oh, wait, hold on. Before you go, guys, new we have man. a new... We have a new member. Welcome. Welcome to Rossonari TV. Kurva Sud. Thank you, uh, Ali. Really appreciate you. Um, really appreciate you. Welcome to the family. All right. Go, go ahead, Antonio. Yeah. And uh, guys, just a reminder, you can become a member and have access to a bunch of cool emojis and other features. And if the channel keeps growing, members will have even more access to our fan uh, panels that we do. And guys, if you are new... We do so much fan interaction and like you know viewers. We we put uh, we do open lives where you guys can come in and uh, you know share your take on all the Milan news. Uh, and members will always have priority with that. So thank you guys. Thank you Ali. Really appreciate it. Uh, and yeah. So on this uh, topic, uh, like you said, it's so important that we can increase our wages because I think I'm not a person, and I think a lot of Milan fans aren't either. You know that 
is demanding a lot in the mercato. Like we're not demanding us to go out and spend like other, you know, like English teams or Real Madrid or whoever. All we want for Milan is to retain our best players. Uh, can we keep Leao? Can we keep Tomori? Tomori has meant a lot of interest already in England. It's early on in his contract, but it's I'm predicting that in the next few years he's going to get a bunch of uh, you know offers from England. Uh, can we keep these players um, by increasing their wages? Uh, so I think that, like you said, this is fundamental to us growing. And as much as we develop young players, we need to keep our best players. So all the work that we've done so far to develop and to grow as a team needs to be uh, reaffirmed with new contracts, uh, with for, especially for you know Hernandez, uh, who did renew, um, Benacer, Leao. Uh, so yeah, Benacer, this is just very good news, and Tomori as well coming up. So like I said, uh, I have to be positive, I have to be positive, and hopefully these things actually go through and we get uh, you push them away for many years and we don't have to worry about them every single summer. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, Conrad Kamara says, how do one be, how do I become a member of this family? If you want to become a member, um, there's a, a click, a link that you can uh, just click on in the description. No, sorry. In the chat, right there pinned in the chat. Uh, you can click on that link and you can become member of the Rossonari TV that way. And as uh, Antonio is saying, uh, yeah, members get uh, perks, uh, emojis, ro loyalty badges, and then we're going to create special events uh, specifically for members. Um, so some people are not too happy with this. MHM says, Benassar are going to do the same thing that KC did. They consider Milan like a stepping stone and not the top of their career. For me, players like this, we need to sell them. They don't deserve to stay. And uh, I think that is fair. That is fair because... Um, you know, it is it is disrespectful to the shirt, to the to the to the team, and also we can't. We need players that want like Tomori, Tomori. We need players like Tomori, like Tonali, like CDK that are willing to make sacrifices in order to stay in the team, because we can't. You know, these players are are not married to the colors. They're ma they want to you know go in other places. They want to get big money. Um, so I, I see what you're saying, my man. I definitely see what you're saying, and you're also saying the same thing about Leao. Let's hope that we can uh, deal with all these situations in the proper way. Uh, let's hope so. All right, guys, let's see how many likes we've gotten. Let's, did we get to 100, or at least close to 100? 80, 80. 80, guys, 20 more likes. Let's get to 20 more, and let's go to chat. Let's see what chat is saying. Um, we're going to uh, talk a little bit with chat, and um, but uh, yeah, members have the ability to said to see Red Chan's face. <laughs> yeah, guys. So basically, that, that, as Antonio was saying, we do a lot of open lives where we invite members from the audience, and uh, we uh, um, there's a lot of fighting, a lot of a lot of fighting, a lot of chaos, but. Uh, uh, Milan News is much more organized, I would say. Lea Renewal, Noah, we gotta wait. We gotta wait. Um, I think we're gonna wait until the Red uh, Redbird officially owns AC Milan or gets majority uh, shareholders. Now, I saw Bianconelli say something. For your information, Locatelli earns 2.5 million and Benasser is asking for 3.2 million. He should earn it first. Um, I think Benasser is, is making that. I think he's making somewhere around there, 2.5, I believe, or something close to that. I think 3.2 is fair. The issue is that I think Benacer thinks that he is, he should be getting what Teo Hernandez is getting. He should be getting, you know, the 4, 4.5. I think Benacer really considers himself an important player of this team, and he considers himself very highly. So he's not satisfied as being seen as one of the players in the mid-range as far as salaries. I think he wants to be, you know, amongst, not the top, like the elite guys, but somewhere close to there. Um... I think 3.2 is 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 good, and I think if he has good performances, they can retouch that contract and they can bring it up. Hopefully he renews, and if he doesn't renew, hopefully we can sell him and actually make some money. Uh, guys, we got a super sticker from Afis. Uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate the super sticker. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, also, just in case we have, I mean, I'm sure most of you guys are subscribed, but in case you aren't subscribed, we uh re really appreciate that subscri the subscription and on top of that turn on notifications because 
we stream all the time. We almost do a stream every day. Um, and sometimes we do even two streams a day if because we have a couple different hosts. So um, if you turn on notifications by clicking that bell uh, next to the subscribe button, you will be informed. Um, you know, I, I mean, at least you should be informed unless YouTube messes up. But uh, you will be informed about every time we go live. And also make sure that you have your phone or whatever device, your notifications on that uh, on as well. So you can see our lives. And uh, yeah, so just keep look out for that. And thank you again, uh, Afis, for the two uh, pound super sticker. Really appreciate that. Uh, and Conrad here is having a problem with the membership link. Uh, also, I think if you click on the Rosso Nutty channel page, you can actually, uh, there should be a button next to the subscribe button on our main page. It says join. And I think if you press that, that will allow you to become a member as well. Yeah. Yeah, the link is working um, for me, at least on my device. But um, yeah, you can go to the main page and click on the join. Click on join and you can become a member through there. Okay. Um, is Lyrit doing a, a market, transfer market episode eight? We will see. Let's see. I think Lyrit is going to be traveling, so we're not going to be seeing much of Lyrit in the next uh, week. Itunu says, please, Roy, can you guys try and maintain decorum when doing dialogue session? Everyone's opinion should be respected. No one should be insulted to drive a point. Yeah, that's true. Itunu, you're 100% correct. It's just it's very difficult because because um, we have um, a very, I don't know, we're, we're very uncivilized. And we, we need to learn how to be more civilized. I, I agree with you. Well, I agree with you. Yeah, and the thing is, I what I am civilized, but I get driven to the point of insanity sometimes, like with some of the claims that people make. So, I mean, listen, if we disagree, we disagree. That would that should be respected. And I think the biggest thing is with these streams, these crazy streams, we need to maybe try to go speak one at a time because we just start yelling over each other and stuff. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, just to keep on going a few more minutes here, Herbert Kipling says, the higher the level the competition gets, the higher wages has to get too. I think so too, also because if we need to compete in the wage department to keep the players, the wage has to go up. Again, I think this is going to change with Redbird. Uh, uh, let me just say this, I've said this before, there's a big difference between Redbird and Elliott Investment Group. Elliott Investment Group is a vulture fund company that uh, uses collateral for debt you know they give you money but you give them collateral if you can't pay that debt back they take the collateral and then they try to make a profit out of it that is their business Redbird's business is sports is taking uh, football is taking sport companies or sporting institutions and growing them so it's a completely I think it's going to be very different the difference between Redbird and Elliot is going to be very different um, okay, so let's uh, look at this one. Il problema è che il Milan per ora ha stabilito un tetto sul monte ingaggi e fino a quando non cambia la società la dirigenza non può rinnovarli sopra i 4.5 milioni. Bisogna aspettare settembre. Exactly. So this is exactly what we said. There's this uh, salary cap of 4.5. We have to wait until September to see if Redbird is going to change that. Uh, just an old chunk of call says, Can Gudibala also ask Juventus for 10 million and now he gets six at Roma? Usually when players are, are unhappy where they are, they ask for more money to compensate. I suspect that's Chukwamenka case okay according to kangu milan won't sign him uh because he wants seven million a season a year uh which is a lot um but then kangu did say that it wasn't from chukomega himself so i don't know yeah yeah i agree um and uh, some of the italian speakers here agree and a lot of people disagree regarding the um, we have to wait for the closing we have to wait for the takeover to happen to see what the renewals will be like and all of that okay guys um i think we're good for today where are we with likes um we are going to be following the marseille game um on sunday so um definitely be there 90 likes, 90 likes. Oh, guys, 10 more likes. Let's get to 10 more, guys. Smash that like button, 10 more. We reach the daily quota, and we are great. We have done this together like a team of the AC Milan community. What about Ziyech? We spoke about Ziyech right now. Ziyech uh, was not um, in the squad. Chelsea just had a friendly. He was not in the squad. Maybe that means that there's some links. Right now, the Ziyech... Is a little bit quiet. The ZH situation is a little bit quiet. We will get to it. 
94 likes. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there, right? Yeah, yeah. We're getting there, guys. Five, six more likes. Six more likes. Come on, guys. And we get to 100. And, guys, today was a great day. CDK, finally. Um, uh, Daniel Maldini, very happy for Daniel Maldini. The links with Tangan Tanganga, maybe not the best. We're hoping for Indica. At least most of us are. And um, Chuka Chukamenka might, looks like a very good prospect. And he looks like a, a good profile. Let's see if that happens, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, guys, Sanchez is not going to be. Thank you, Harold Kola, um, for for joining us. Welcome to Rosonari TV. If you're new, subscribe and like the stream. Everyone, 97 likes. Also, also, guys, tell uh, any of your friends who are Mila fans to come on because we appreciate every single viewer. Like today, we had 100 plus view viewers at a time on our stream. We other days that we stream, like you know, a few months ago or even a, a year ago, we'd have like 10, 15 viewers at a time, and we appreciate every single one of you, like you guys. And we will stream no matter what, even with whoever's here. But the fact that we have such a big community now and it's growing is just really impressive. And uh, we're all diehard Milan used to here, so it's just a great community. So that that is a fact. That is a fact. This is a diehard Milanisti community. That is definitely a fact. Uh, Ziech, bomba di fine mercato per strapparlo scontato come se fossimo nel mercato della frutta. Uh, basically saying, yeah, Ziech might be um, at the end of the market when everything is discounted, we might get him. And guys, that's, that's a good point. The, that last week of the mercato, a lot of things might happen. A lot of things, things that we probably didn't even think about, connections and links that we never even talked about that final week of the Mercato, when the agents are scrambling to get their players sold, when the teams are scrambling to, to get players, and there's so much chaos. Who knows? We might, we might get some really good deals. Last time we got Messias, but uh, this time, uh, and no, no disrespect to Messias, of course, but this time, who knows what is going to happen. Yeah, we are going to do the watch-along. Um... Subscribe, like, and join it. Thank you. Really appreciate it. 98, 99 likes right now. Guys, one more like, and we have achieved today's quota. One more like. Let's do it. Yeah, this is a very uh, no, great day. Great, great stream. Uh, yes. So, Roy, are we doing a watch-along for the Marseille game on Sunday? Yes, we are doing a watch-along. Will Marseille. you be streaming the game or just discussing it? Uh, we'll... we'll find that out we'll figure it 101 out. likes right now 101 likes. all right guys there you go we've done it guys thank you everybody for joining us today really appreciate everybody um join us again next time we go live we do milan news mostly every day but we also do a lot of uh, um, streams where we invite uh, a lot of people and there's big discussions sometimes it can get chaotic but it is what it is guys everybody thank you for joining us really appreciate everybody Forza Milan. We will see you next time, guys. And uh, CDK, CDK, he is here and he's here to stay. All right, guys. Thank you, chat. Thank you, everybody. Antonio, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, listen, I really appreciate it being here and um, we'll hopefully do another stream very soon. Uh, definitely Sunday. Definitely Sunday. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Alla prossima. Arrivederci. Forza Milan. Ciao. Vincerai, non ti lascerai, 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 non ti lascer